Four defeats already during the Premier League campaign. A record for United this early on in the season. We continue to break these records. Not the ones we want to be breaking at all. But this team has gone backwards again. Just after that game on Wednesday night, we think we've turned a corner. Suddenly these players look sharp. There's effort there again. There was effort in this game up against Palace, but it was just woeful at times. The quality level was terrible. Palace came with exactly the same game plan. They didn't really play much better compared to what they did in midweek. They had that one chance, scored from it. Yet again, United can't do the basics of defending a set piece. And then after that, then Palace weren't even interested in trying to get a second goal. They said to United, well, come on then, break us down. And United couldn't do it. 80% possession for the majority of the game. United barely created a clear-cut opportunity. It's just simply not good enough. There's big senior players in this squad now that are just not stepping up for United. I'm going to go through my five talking points and those are going to be listed in there. But once again, this United team, Ten Hag, has to take some control now. I'm not going to be hearing any Ten Hag shouts just yet. But definitely this United team, we've got to improve. Otherwise, we're basically writing off the season here and now. I'm starting off my five talking points, guys. The first one I want to talk about is going to be Marcus Rashford. Not pinning all the blame on him for our attacking troubles, but he's definitely one of the reasons why we were pretty toughless in this game. He had multiple opportunities in that first half to have a go at his centre-back or to get the ball in the box. He didn't do it. Once again, he's there just running at players blindly, not trying to pick out any of his teammates, and he ends up just running down a blind alley. And his body language is awful throughout the game. He's there limping round half the time. Anyone touches him, he just goes down. He's killing the game with any momentum for United. I was surprised Ten Hag took him off because he doesn't normally do that with Rashford. So you can tell how bad he was playing in this one. It didn't help turn him on the right-hand side. I said it, it doesn't help with Rashford now that we don't have a proper left-back in there. Playing Amrabat in that left-back spot, inverting him in field. Amrabat had a decent enough game, but it does mean that Rashford is very isolated on that left-hand side. And you're not getting the best out of Rashford that way, so it's a two-pronged thing. But obviously United can't help their lack of full-backs at the minute, so it's a problem that Ten Hag is going to have to solve somehow. But Rashford's levels are nowhere near good enough, and you can lump Bruno Fernandes in on that as well. He created the moment, moment of magic up against Burnley, but in this one, another woeful performance from him. These two are meant to be the game changers for United, players that you rely on in these type of games. But time and time again, the start of this season, those two players haven't showed up for United. They need to bring that quality that we know they have. Things are just not going United's way at all at the minute. And then secondly, guys, I've already mentioned Rashford, I've mentioned Fernandez. But another senior player who's consistently letting United down at the minute is going to be Casemiro for me. I thought he turned the corner in that game in midweek because he was excellent. His passing was pinpoint in that game. But this time around up against Palace, he went back to that old Casemiro, the Casemiro that we've seen the first few weeks of the season. Giving the ball away consistently, you cannot have your older midfielder giving the ball away as much as this guy does. You can't do it. Those aimless balls he's just chipping over the top. He's got no right to be playing them. We're 1-0 down. We're trying to create some consistent pressure. And we can't do it because players like Casemiro are just giving the ball away far too cheaply. He was on a yellow card. He should have got sent off really in that second half of that challenge on Eze. Another one of the United senior players who's just nowhere near good enough for me. He cannot keep playing the way he is. Once we do get a left-back fit, I wouldn't mind seeing Amrabat starting in that centre midfield position, giving Casemiro a bit of a rest. I'm hoping he can somehow find that form that he had in that first game up against Palace. Because he has that level to his game. But consistently in the Premier League this season, he's been nowhere near good enough. And then thirdly, I've talked a lot about the United players who are letting us down at the minute. But we're also not getting anything from the refs. We're not getting anything at the minute. There's been consistently goals chalked off. We're not getting penalties given to us. That handball, how can this not be handball? The, the ball's been floated in. It's not as if it's just bounced to him from a metre out. 
It's been floated in. He's turned his back on it and he's just chucked his hand on it. When Rashford is waiting to pounce on that ball. How can that not be on ball? I can't wait to see the apology after this one. They'll definitely say, oh, it was down by his side. Oh, he can't do too much about it. There's no way that he should be on ball in that. The ball's floated in. He's turned his back on it. It's definitely a handball. We're not getting anything from VAR at the minute. And I hated the way the commentator just played it off as if it was nothing. They were more focused on the Amrabat handball, which was bounced to him from about a metre away. That one is never handball. This one, he's got so much time to react, and he just sticks his hand on it. How can that not be handball? And then penultimately, I try not to be too harsh on Palestri at the minute. But it's clear for me that he's not ready to play consistently in the Premier League. We found that out now. He had a decent game up against Palace in the Carabao Cup. And I'm all for keeping him playing in that Carabao Cup. But at the minute in the Premier League, the level just isn't there for him. I thought Garnacho had a much better time of it when he came on on that left-hand side. He was definitely better than both Rashford and Palistri put together. But Palistri, he seems a very lightweight. Obviously... It didn't help a lot of the balls into him weren't good enough. A lot of it was bounced to him in, in the air, and it's not, he's not going to thrive on that. But even with Dallow helping him out in this game, he obviously Rashford didn't have that on his wing. But Palistri just doesn't seem ready. The quality isn't quite there just yet. Not to say that he can't make it for United, but it's definitely very early doors for him. And unfortunately, because of injuries and Anthony's absence, and obviously Sancho as well, We've had to throw him in there when I don't think Ten Hag really wanted to. And then lastly, guys, I've already said it, but we're kind of at the end in the season year territory, really. Ten Hag has to do something desperate now to try and get us back in that top four race, because at the minute, we're nowhere near it. The Premier League games have been nowhere near good enough. 80% possession up against Palace, you're playing at home. At least we had that home record last season. We've already lost twice at home this year. Absolutely toughless in attack, conceded 11 goals, scored 7. That tells you all you need to know so far. We've got a favourable run of games coming up, this was one of them. If we don't win those, then we're going into games up against Man City, Liverpool. And I'm dread to see what we're going to be doing in those games. Ten Hag has to take some responsibility because he signed Hoyland. We're not utilising him at all at the minute. He signed Mount. And that midfield of Mount Fernandes and Casemiro isn't working. So what has Tenar got for us then? Yes, we've got a ton of injuries and I am going to cut in some slack because of that. We obviously don't want to be playing Amrabat at left back. We don't want to have Palistri on that right wing. We don't want to have Lindelof in there. I haven't even mentioned him in so far in this video. I got sidetracked on that one. There's no way that Lindelof should be starting over Maguire for me. And that's on Tenar. Lindelof, he's average at every facet of the game. Like, he doesn't give you anything. He passes the ball sideways. He's not commanding at all. At least with Maguire, he gets his head on things. Like, I'd rather him in there to Lindelof. And that's saying some things. I don't rate Maguire at all either. Ten Hag has to take some responsibility for this defeat. Despite the injuries, it's still not good enough. We still should be beating Palace quite comfortably. So there we are, guys. I'm fed up at doing these sort of negative reaction videos after the game. But it's just how I'm feeling at the minute. It's hard to be a beat by this United team. I was so happy after that game in midweek. And yes, we overreacted after it. Because we haven't had anything so far this season. Yet again, we've took one step forward, but two steps back with this game. We've got to bounce back now in that Champions League game up against Galatasaray on Tuesday. And then I think we've got Brentford next Saturday as well. We've got home games coming up. There's no reason why United shouldn't be able to go on a run of wins now. This injury excuse, yes, it's there. But it doesn't wash for me because that Palace team should have been beaten comfortably. They're a pretty bad team who just rely on defending. And United couldn't just get one goal even in this game. Absolutely shocking. As always, guys, stay tuned to Welsh Red TV. Hopefully we've got better times to come. Hopefully, I'll see you there.